Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at some basics of content modeling in content.ai. Specifically, we'll look at creating some basic content types, we'll look at how we can create related content types via linked items, and lastly, we'll look at how we can create efficient reusable data substructures with content snippets. So let's get into it. As you can see here, I'm logged into the CMS and on the left, I'll go to the content model application. In the content model application, this is where we do our content modeling and you can see here are some recently created content types. So I'll go ahead and create two new content types. Keeping this example pretty simple, um, I'll create two types, one for a person and one for a company. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first content type will be a person. And on the right here, we've got the elements or data fields that I can use to create my data structure or content type. I'll keep it basic and just use the text um, element for now. So first one will do is first name. We'll mark that as required. We'll add a last name as well. We'll also mark that as required. And finally, we'll just do an email address market is required and let's use um, a regular expression pattern just to ensure that um, our correct email is validated so we'll save our changes there so that's our first content type and now we'll create our second content type which is the company and we'll just add one um, element field here we'll call it company name mark that as required and we'll save our changes so going back to the content model, we can see here we've got our company and we've got our person. What I'll do now is I'll create some data or some content items based on these two new content types. So I'll go into content and assets and I'll go to create new and the type I want to create is company. Here we can define our workflow. So we'll do a low risk workflow and I'll create a company here. That's the content um, item name, and this is our field. So there we go, and now we'll create two person um, content items. So create new, we'll do person, a low risk workflow and we'll create so the first one and we'll do the email address there we go create our second person so person content type so that spelling mistake and there we go. We've got our two person content items and we've got our company content item. Now suppose we want to add employees to our company. We can achieve this by using the linked item element type, which will allow us to create a related data reference between content items. So if we go back into our content model and we select our company content type, can grab the linked items element and we'll name it employees. We'll mark it as required and we can then specify what type of content item we allow here and also we can put restrictions on how many etc. Let's just leave it open in terms of how many we can add but we'll limited to only allow a person so there we go we'll save that 
And now if we go back into content and assets and we go back to our company, we now need to add some employees. So we can add those existing two that we created earlier. And there we go. Now we've got that related data. We could also create a new employee from here. So I might just add myself. There we go. We go back to Spacely Sprockets. Here I am with my colleagues. And if we go back to content and assets, we can see I've also been created here as a person content type. Now let's look at extending our two content types, person and a company, and adding fields or elements for an address. So if we were to go back into a content model and company, we could add some elements here for an address and then we could go back to the person and we could do the same. But this would really be doubling up as an address will be made up of the same data fields in both cases. So to eliminate this data field redundancy, we can create a reusable substructure for an address and then we can reuse that substructure within other content types. And we do that by using something called a content snippet. So in our content model, if we go to content snippets, we can't actually create content items from these, but these give us reusable data substructures. So here's one I created earlier for an address. And you can see I've got all the fields pertaining to an address. So address line one and two, city, state and country. And we can now reuse this in our other two content types. So let's have a look at what that looks like. If I go to company, I can create a content type snippet element and I will select the one that we just saw, address. So I'll save that. And we can also go to our person content type and I can do the same. So I can add our content snippet and I'll do address and then I'll save that. Now, if we go into content and assets, and if we have a look at what those content items look like, let's look at a person first. You can now see those address fields have been added here. And if we go to a company, the same thing has happened there. And if we were to go back to content snippets and just for fun, let's put planet and save that. If we go back to our content items, that's now been added as well. So it's that single source of truth. There's planet there. So this is a good example of where we might consider using content type snippets. But another great use case is for SEO. Let's have a look at a simple SEO specific example, which would be a more common real world use case when considering a content model design. Let's go back to the content model and to content type snippets. And when we were looking at the address earlier, you may have noticed another content type snippet that I created earlier, SEO metadata. So this is a very basic SEO metadata example, and I've only included title and description. You could have OG field and, and anything else, um, depending on the context. But just to keep it really simple, let's just use title and description to, to just get basic metadata fields. Now, if we go back to our content model here, there are two specific page types that I've created for a more web-centric application. They are a page, so like a web page where we've got a title, content body, URL, showing navigation, 
and a sub pages element. And we've got another one for an article. So where there might be blogs or news articles or something like this, this content type also has its own very specific um, element fields there. But what we want is because these would both be landing pages, so the page and the article, they would require some SEO fields to be populated. So we can do this by simply, again, going to content type snippet and choosing SEO metadata. We can save that. And we can go to our page as well. And content type snippet and SEO metadata. And now we can look at what this actually looks like. So let's go to content and assets and let's create a new article, for example. And if we do that, you can see we've got our article fields and right at the bottom here, we've got our title and description. And we can even make this a little bit more user intuitive by using something called content groups. So as you can see, all of these fields pertaining to the actual article data and pertaining to the SEO are all just grouped in one big form here. We can separate that more logically. So if we go to content model and article, what I'll do is I'll first create a content group. I'll call it content or let's call it article content. So this creates a tab. And then I'll add another one called SEO. And then what I can do is I can grab this one, this SEO metadata snippet. And then I can move it to the SEO group. So there it is. So that's now split. Save those changes. And let's have a look at what creating an article looks like. So pick an article again. That's a lot cleaner now. So you can see our article content is separated from the SEO data, which is here. And another great thing about content.ai is with the, with the security model that we can apply to our world and our users, these tabs can actually be, can actually be specific to a user role. So a particular user role might only be able to see the article content and then a different user role might only be able to see this, the SEO tab or another user role might see both tabs. So some very granular security settings that are available as well. So there we have it, a simple content modeling example where we saw content item creation, how to create related content items and finally, how to reuse common data structures to mitigate data structure redundancy. The content model tooling that content.ai offers will allow you to create a well-designed, efficient and scalable content model, something that is imperative in any CMS, never more so than when designing mature, data-driven, content-first architectures.